Your what's up Giants fans, hub watchers, YouTube and Rumble subscribers, Twitter and Instagram followers. It's Kush back at it again with another New York Giants update video. We got two free agency um updates. I was gonna say moves, but one of them is really just a player moving on rather than us moving on from them, if that makes sense. They're the one making the decision. And then of course we did sign somebody probably about I want to say 30 minutes ago as of this recording along with just some very simple draft talk with the implications of that let's start off with the guy that's moving on first of all it is lorenzo carter the third round draft pick in 2018 out of georgia edge rusher formerly of the new york giants we are all very familiar with lorenzo carter somebody that we all hoped that would have developed into you know one of the better edge rushers in the nfl uh he was the first edge drafted under the dave gellman regime and I want to say the ed, the edge between him and O'Shane Zimenez, he was the one we had more faith in because he had, he was a guy with high upside, very high ceiling. He matches that mold that the NFL loves now um, coming out the draft of athletic, you know, raw, super talented, but has a lot of work to do on the technical side of things and has a lot to put together in order to become a complete player and a complete edge rusher. And well, it just did not manifest with the new york giants now the giants didn't cut him or anything since he was drafted in 2018 his contract was up he was not eligible for a fifth year extension you know the fifth year option so if the giants want to bring him back we simply had to go out there and give him a new contract obviously the new regime did not deem that he did enough to be worthy of a new contract it seems and well carter took to instagram and uh, kind of posted a goodbye and thank you just a nice farewell note to fans. I'll read it out to you guys right now as I, I will pop it onto the screen too. Uh, obviously, you see it's a picture of him running out at MetLife. Um, unfortunately, there's nobody there. This might have been there in the pandemic, I'm guessing. Uh, but here's what the message says. It's hard for me to put into words how blessed I am to have been a part of the New York football giants family this past four years. Leaving home as a young man and coming to New York taught me so much about not just myself, but opened my eyes to the world as a whole and that's something I will never forget. The people in the building that spent every day and night making sure we had everything we needed from the kitchen staff to equipment to the janitors to the trainers, the list goes on and on, but I'm thankful for everyone that played their part in making my time with the organization so special. Thanks to everyone that's invested in me, not just as an athlete, but as a person overall. Um, the connections and memories I made are something I will cherish forever as I move on to my new chapter. I'll never forget the big blue, love always, Zoe. And I will say, man, that's a very, that's just a very nice message. Just well written, well spoken, just like a giant through and through. And and I, I, I admit, I'm going to miss Lorenzo Carr a little bit. I was one of those people that thought he was going to be something, you know, great in the NFL. I remember in the 2020 offseason, or I should say, you know, the season before 2020, I made videos saying that I think this was going to be his breakout year, gave him reasons why I think it would be his breakout year. I thought he was going to fit well with Patrick Graham's defense, and he did. You know, for just to a little bit of a point, it did look like Renzo was going to do something in 2020 before he tore his Achilles. But unfortunately, well, he tore his Achilles and then he came back in 2021. And what was it for the for first 14 weeks of the season? Zero sacks, just not really effective at all. Now, granted, he probably could have been used more and he was definitely kind of pushed back on the depth chart with Aziz Ojolari being drafted but not much production and then of course it brings us to a little bit of a conundrum and this is something that depending on where he goes and how he performs could really either you know, either you know bite us in the butt as giants or make us look right and make us look smart in his last four games the guy came up with five sacks that's amazing all right no matter the player you are to get five sacks in four games is not an easy accomplishment but it's something that he did and it definitely rose eyebrows they got a lot of giants fans turned around on his ship saying maybe we should bring him back on some type of prove a deal or something um who knows maybe this current regime did offer him a prove a deal but he didn't want it we'll, we'll never know what goes on behind closed doors right but the point i bring up with that five sacks and four games thing is that is it a result of him you know finally fully recovering from that achilles injury and kind of picking up in his progressions where he left off in 2020 or is it just an anomaly you know something that we're not going to see again from a player like lorenzo carter or is it like you know a player that's trying to go all out so that he could get his contract get his money because we've seen all three of those in the nfl before 
Nevertheless, though, um, I was glad to have Lorenzo here. I would definitely be happy to see him again in the future in Giants Blue, maybe as like, you know, a depth rotational piece. I thought that's what he was going to pl play this year. Um, I just think that this means we have to take an edge rusher a little bit more now uh, because now we're losing pieces. We're losing depth, right? And Lorenzo, he technically was a starter for us. Um, so, so we'll see what they do in the draft. But this just means we got to take an edge even more, in my opinion. And then to the signing that we had today, Matt Breida. I know him from the San Francisco 49ers because I remember him in 2018. That was his best season. But he is also most recently from, you guessed it, the Buffalo Bills. We are slowly becoming the New York Bills with the amount of Bills players that we're signing. Obviously, coaches and whatnot, our head coach and GM is from the Bills. People are making a lot of jokes about it. And I just want to say, I get why the jokes are being made. But you also have to kind of understand why they're going towards Bills players. Because it's the players that's going to fit right away into the fold right they're gonna know the schemes more they're gonna know the plays more the front office is gonna be more familiar with them at least you know the head of the front office in joe shane there's a reason that when gentlemen came here we were being made fun of as the new york panthers and then um for the defensive side the new york cardinals because that's what the coaches are familiar familiar with at least for the first year you're gonna need a couple players that could slide easily in that's gonna make it less difficult for your job um, so I, I understand why they're doing it. And it's not like we're signing, you know, star players to it. Matt Breida here, he hasn't really been a star since his second year. If You, you know, when he had 800 rushing yards with the Cisco 49ers. And uh, by the way, that was his career year in terms of everything. He started 13 out of 16 games that year. He got his most rushing attempts, which is why he produced the well. He got his most rushing yards. He also had uh, the most receiving targets and then of course receiving yards that year matt breeder is a really good running back really really fast too oh man is he fast and if you play man you know sometimes he could be a cheat code it's i don't know why madden loves that man but he's a super fast running back i think he's gonna be a great number two to saquon barkley in a running back by committee yeah i think he could be the header running back by committee because that's exactly what he was in san fran but in this system i would say that he is you know a number two to Saquon's number one I will say though I don't know I feel like he just needs to go to some place that actually gives him a couple more opportunities although his time is running out we know the lifespan of a running back in the NFL I think he's entering his sixth year now and since that second year in 2018 where he had career highs and everything I, for some reason he just hasn't had the opportunities to go out there and do it again and um in 2019 they kind of took away his playing time I think he only started like six games in 2019 or maybe that was 2020 but he's just kind of gone down in everything since then and i think it's a direct correlation because he started less games they've given him less opportunities they've given him less snaps it is what it is man but he's going to be a good number two running back in terms of the draft now unlike the ricky seals jones contract which i said we're still going to draft a tight end i think we still need another tight end on this roster and potentially with the deep you know draft at the position that it is i think we can still get a starting guy there with the running back i don't know i could be wrong but i think this takes us out of the running for drafting a running back call me crazy i say that because now we do have three three of them on the roster we have saquon at the one antonio williams at the two um i'm sorry antonio williams at the three and matt Breida at the two we have three running backs i mean we could probably get another one through undrafted free agency or something if we want you know another depth piece to be behind antonio williams or something or to be you know behind matt breed or whatever the case is to go out there and draft the running back like i said i could be wrong but i don't see us drafting a james cook for example who is one of the you know upper echelon backs in this draft we're probably gonna do a bit later on you know maybe we do get a jerome ford like i was saying in my mock draft uh part of the reason i say this not only because we now have three guys on the roster but part of the reason i say this is because well, Ryan Dable's offense in Buffalo didn't really prioritize running backs like that. If I make if I'm trying to make a little bit of an argument here, um he had Devin Singletary and Zach Moss, and they always combined for like I think around twelve hundred rushing yards last year. But his main rushing weapon was was Josh Allen, right? Like that was the rushing threat out of Buffalo. You still had your running backs, but Josh Allen was the main rusher. And and we saw that as a trend. Because of that, he didn't really put much emphasis into the running back position in my opinion that could change you know it's a completely different organization now that he's with completely different regime completely different players um it could definitely change but i think this would take us out of the running back maybe a little bit we'll see how it goes i mean the draft is only a month away and then the one last thing i want to talk about regarding this nfl draft is that the giants are expected to be 
I think is it Kenny Pickett's pro day, uh, Shea Tierney, our quarterback's coach. They're going to be at the house watching Kenny Pickett for the, for the Pittsburgh football pro day. Now, I think this is all a smokescreen. I don't want to get anybody alarmed, which is why I'm not going to spend too much time on it. Uh, of course, I reacted to it on Twitter as well as many other people. Uh, people are kind of scared that, oh my God, we're going to take Kenny Pickett with the fifth or seventh overall pick. Guys, guys, let me calm you down. There's a team in Carolina at sixth overall right now who more than any team I've seen is like rumored heavily to like Kenny Pickett. We pick one spot ahead of them. The Giants are trying to trade down. And they're trying to trade down right now. Because if Carolina at 6-1 Kenny Pickett, if the Giants pretend to have interest in Kenny Pickett, maybe somebody wants to trade up with them. Or maybe even Carolina just wants to move up one spot. I think they're just playing the draft game. Um, you know, you could call it doing your due diligence. I really think they're doing smokes and mirrors and trying to get somebody to call up because somebody might want Kenny Pickett in this draft. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to just put that out there. Not going to spend too much time on it. But that's it for now, guys. Put your thoughts down below. Let me know what you think. Like, share, subscribe. And I'm out. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Thank you for checking out my channel, The Hub, here on Giants YouTube. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you hear every time I put out a video. Like it, share, and subscribe, and I'm out.